Okay, in this video I'm going to be doing some repairs to the exterior purging on my house. As you can see, I've got some crack that need to be dealt with. And it's obviously flaking off some of the purging that was on previously. So I'm going to work at uh, fixing all of this as well as painting it so that it's all a uniform color. Uh, you can also see I've done some repairs on some of the cracks previously. And obviously they're quite unsightly. And I'm going to hopefully get those parged and painted as well. Some areas are quite uh, poorly adhered to the concrete wall. And just hitting them with this little stick actually knocks them right off without any difficulty. So I'm going to work at getting all of this sort of flaky parging off in order to apply new parging and hopefully have it set up better than it currently is. In addition to the loose parging, you can see some separation between uh, the stucco and some of the sort of decorative parging that was done. Uh, some of it's been peeling away due to weathering. So we're going to hopefully fix all of that as well. First thing I'm going to do is use the pressure washer to get all the dust and dirt uh, off the side of the house and hopefully uh, allow the, the new parging to adhere better to the wall as well as to allow the new paint and primer I'm going to use to try and get everything a uniform color to adhere to the wall a little bit better as well. After a good pressure washing, I just used a nail to try and uh, remove any of the loose areas that I could find and just pick out anything that didn't look like it was well adhered to the wall. Because so obviously I, once I paint it, I don't want all those loose chunks of uh, parging and stucco to be uh, remaining behind and then obviously cause breakage in the, uh, the paint. Once additional loose areas were removed, I just used a Scotch-Brite pad and some water and gave those areas a good scrubbing as well to ensure that there wasn't any dust or debris left behind uh, to inhibit the parging that I'm going to put on from adhering to it. Once I've got all the cracks cleaned up, I'm going to use something called Sika Pro Select Concrete Fix, which is an elastomeric caulking specifically designed to fill the cracks in the concrete. This product's designed to be a non-shrinking and non-cracking concrete fix. And overall, I do like how it, how it performs. My one complaint about it is that it is a very sticky elastomeric caulking. And I do highly recommend wearing gloves uh, when working with it, just because it, it sticks to your, your hands, sticks to everything so much. It is a, a little bit annoying, and it is hard to clean up afterwards. Uh, so definitely if you're going to use it like I do, where you, you kind of spread it on uh, out of the tube and then f work it into the crack using your hands, definitely uh, wearing a set of gloves would be beneficial. Prior to adding parging to the wall, I did look around to see if I could find some more loose sections of uh, old parging, and, and sure enough, there was quite a few areas that had uh, extremely loose air, uh, parging. I used Quickrete Concrete Bonding Adhesive on the wall also before putting on the parging and this just helps the parging or if you're using stucco or an additional concrete material, helps it bond to the wall. So nothing special. If you had a large area you could use a roller to put it on. Uh, since I'm working with fairly small areas, I just used a sort of glass jar and paintbrush and just paint it on the surfaces so that wherever I put the new parging, uh, it would hopefully adhere better and uh, last uh, substantially longer than the parging that was done originally. Using a roller, of course, would have been faster, um, but I didn't see a need to spend more money, buy a roller, and uh, basically you know, ruin it using this uh, concrete adhesive. And here's a shot of all the damaged areas now that the concrete bonding adhesive uh, has been applied to all damaged sections. The product I used to sort of patch up the old um, areas without parging is called Quick Crete Exterior Stucco Patch. Overall, I found this product was, was pretty easy to use and um, I had no real issues with it. My one big suggestion is to add slightly more water than uh, recommended. It really helped it sort of adhere to the wall. When I initially 
sort of use the manufacturer's recommendation uh, and try to stick to that, I found the product did not stick to the wall nearly as well, but adding sort of 10% uh, more water and it, uh, it really adhered well. I didn't use a real uh, proper trowel or anything, I just used a, a spreading knife for uh, drywall that I've done previously. Not perfect, but again, if you want to save some money uh, using simple tools that you got around the house, for me, uh, worked pretty well. Once I got the entire uh, damaged area covered with uh, the new stucco mix, I, uh, I then sort of worked it around a little bit so that it looked fairly similar to the rest of the wall. Obviously the color is wrong, but we'll fix that soon. The manufacturer of the stucco patch recommends that for three days following the application that you hose it down uh, at least daily uh, and have it super saturated with water. This helps it adhere to the flat concrete wall behind and hopefully we'll get a product that lasts significantly longer than the five years the original parge on my wall uh, lasted. So prior to painting, I'm going to roll on some uh, exterior grade primer. This is an Insulex product which I picked up from Benjamin Moore, uh, and it is a, uh, approved for masonry surfaces, including stucco, um, as well as uh, cinder blocks. I'm just using a, a cheap paintbrush to do this because obviously it's going to get into dirt and it's going to be a little bit of a messy job. And for the roller, I chose the um, basically the largest nap that I could uh, get my hands on just because this stucco that I'm painting has a, a lot of you know creases and it is a very rough surface. So the first uh, sort of thing I do before painting a section is to do the edges, uh, essentially cut them, and I do that to, to both the top and the bottom prior to starting rolling. Now as far as this product goes, uh, I found the primer to be a, a very thick and sticky sort of paint, um, but I had no real issues rolling this stuff on, although it uh, definitely the, the rough sort of stucco type surface took a lot of paint, so uh, if you're going to do stucco or, or parging as I did, uh, be prepared to use a lot more of the, uh, the primer and paint than you had thought. Also, just because of uh, the rough texture of the wall, I found it beneficial to go uh, sort of up and down, back and forth, and kind of attack it at an angle as well, just to, to get the primer into all the nooks and crannies, and even then I had to go back over uh, the area a few times. So this is sort of the largest uh, wall. You can see I got most of the primer up here, and it's uh, looking pretty good. Now for the paint, I used Benjamin Moore Regal Select and it's an exterior paint, again, with a, a flat finish, so it doesn't uh, have a lot of sheen to it, which is not something that I typically like on a, a textured or rough surface. This product I found was uh, a lot runnier, more liquid than the primer, and it actually, as such, went on a little bit easier uh, and got into the nooks and crannies a little bit better. I used the same uh, roller and paintbrush, I just had to clean them up first. And I also used the, sort of the same technique. So the first thing I did was the edges and cut in with the paintbrush. Just like the primer, I did the top first and then I worked in with the bottom. Um, obviously, like I said when I was doing the, the primer, this is a pretty messy job. So you're going to want just a, a junky paintbrush. You're going to get it into the dirt and rocks and grime and stuff, so try not to get that into your paint if you if you can avoid it. And as far as rolling it, I use the exact same technique, uh, sort of up and down, back and forth, side to side, coming at it in an angle. Basically there's so many nooks and crannies on, on this stucco or parging that you really have to attack it from multiple angles and, and multiple times. So once I had all the uh, area painted and it was dried, I would walk back and, and see if I could find any white spots that didn't have the paint where you could still see the, the primer showing through and then I would hit those again with the roller. So overall I probably did paint the parging twice just because I had to go over so many sections uh, to cover up all the um, white that you could see from the stucco underneath it.
So here's the longest and largest wall complete. I have finished uh, the three other walls with this type of parging on it. I found the job was pretty easy overall, but it did take quite a lot of time just because you had to wash the wall, then put the parging on, wait for that to dry, wait for the primer to dry, then wait for the paint to dry. So it took about three weeks just to, to get through it, even though it didn't take a whole lot of time um, out of each day that you were working on it. So I'll try and get a side-by-side -side of before and after as well. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.